So I'm sure it'll come as no surprise that you, in order to really see improvement, you're gonna to need to practice. So there's, no, there's no way around that fact. In order to, for me to assign exercises to you that you can drill almost as much as you like, we need some way of documenting things, of, of writing it down. So the traditional notation, you know, with the squiggly lines and the, and the notes on the page, Getting really confident with that and being able to sight read, they'd call it, just to be able to put the sheet of music in front of you and just be programmed to play it exactly as it should sound, that takes years of study. Really, some of the top guitarists out there don't read music at all, okay? Which is why we're not going to focus too much on it, but just initially, just to have some exercises of, of practicing switching between different notes, having a basic understanding, I think, is important. So traditional notation We'll do a quick explanation of that. I'm going to do my best to summarize it in a way that will be enough for, for all we need because we're, we're not going to focus on it too, for too long. So here we go. Now, the other thing is that we've got more than one clef out there. The, the, you know, the, most, the two most common ones that you'll see are the, the treble clef and the bass clef. Now, on guitar, we only need to focus on the treble clef and it's, it's definitely more, more melodic instruments use a treble clef than, than anything else. I'd have to say that would be true. If you've done music stuff before at school or whatever, you might remember some of the sayings that they might use as to where we've, we've got our notes allocated to the, the lines, the five lines of the staff. And the one that I find is the most common is every good boy deserves fruit. Some other ones I've heard were every guitarist begins doing fine or uh, empty garbage before dad flips you know whichever one you care to use but definitely every good boy deserves fruit seems to be the the most common one now of course that's you know, the the notes that are on the lines as we ascend that bottom line is an e for every we don't have to remember any little saying for the notes that are in the spaces because it just happens to spell the word face as we ascend all you really need to know is that yes we're starting on e and as we go from line to space to line to space it's just going e f g a, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, what I didn't mention is that in music, our alphabet only goes to G. Then it starts again and goes back around to A. The sound of that, if I start it, I'm just going to start at an A note, and we're just going to hear as we ascend, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, and it just goes on like that. So, what's that? Seven notes? Do we only have seven notes to make music? No, we don't. We've got more than that because we've got our sharps and flats that occur in between. They're an annoying kind of thing. It seems like, why did they work it out that way? Why didn't they just make there be 12 notes that we have to learn and, you know, going right through the alphabet that far? Well, it's too late to change it now. And, you know, as you go along, we, we, you realize that it is, it is the best way. That It's genius the way they've worked out how, to, how we notate music. Now, traditional notation has been around for, you know, was around for hundreds of years before the guitar, as we know it, even came along. When they came up with that way of, of notating, they really didn't have guitarists in mind. You'll see what I mean as we get into it. It kind of seems like the range of notes that we have on a guitar is kind of tedious in the way that we've got a bit more range than can, we can easily cover in, on, a, on a staff or in the treble clef range there so it can get a little bit confusing when we go to the lowest notes and the highest notes that we can get to on a guitar for the notes that we will look at initially all we need to know is that our e note that sounds like this is going to be right there on the in the space at the top and then we've also got our on our line just above that is the very next note that we can play next to the note that's available to us and that's where we turn our e note into our f note okay now next one up that's in in getting into that no man's land there which is where i was saying before that the, the notation gets tricky there's where our g note is and that's the highest note that we'll need to keep track of through the entirety of any of the stuff that i'm going to make because you can see what what starts to happen then as our notes go higher then we get into notes that are away from the staff they're getting outside of that so we sort of need to there's no real um sayings that we use or anything to help us cheat our way through that now that same sort of idea applies as we get to below our e note incidentally that e note that's there on the bottom line is there so we've got quite a lot of notes that we can go that are lower than that okay and as we work our way down that's where we're going into the area below the staff most of the exercises that we'll assign though will, will be just um, focusing within the area that is within the in the treble clef notes. So all you need to know is we start at the bottom and have our little sayings. Every good boy deserves fruit. Also the word face. Now that's really going to slow you down as you, if you were trying to read us read the notes of a song and play it you know in, in real time. So ideally 
the more practice you get, the more you just get used to what it looks like. You know, if I see the note that's in that space second from the top, I know it's I know it's a C. I'm not having to go F A C C. Okay, you just get used to what it looks like. If if reading music is something that you can see the benefit to being able to do, and it, and it is a useful thing to be able to do, it's just it surprises a lot of people actually how many of those famous really good guitarists can't read a note of music to save themselves and a lot of teachers focus on it so much it takes the fun out of music in a way according you know in some people's opinions the thing that traditional notation is good for is letting us have no doubts or, or uncertainties about the rhythms the note values that go along with what we're playing so of course in music the notes that we play are important but just as important as that is the notes that we don't play any gaps or silences and breaks in the in the music they make it sound more musical i guess we need to know our what our note values look like but we also need to know what the what the rests the, the the times that we shouldn't be playing look like as well so just quickly going over those we've got our semi breathe which is the longest note we have or also called a, a whole note I tend to, pref to prefer the uh, traditional names for them, so semi breathe, which is kind of strange because it seems like semi would imply half, half of something, but in this case it's, you know, it's the biggest note we have, so four beats for that one. If we chop that in half in note value, we get a note that goes for two beats, which they might call a half note. We will call it a minim, and that has the hole in the middle uh, with the stick coming off it, all right? So if we halve that again, we have possibly our most common ones that we'll be doing in a lot of the exercises here, which is our crotchet or our quarter note, they would call it. Just the black one with the line coming off it. So as our notes get faster than that, as we get into our eighth notes and our sixteenth notes and, and things like that, our quavers and our semi-quavers, okay? Now a quaver is the eighth note, just has the line coming off it, or we often tie them together. But I don't know if we'll be even looking at many pieces of music that, that will even start to use that. So if we get into songs that are difficult enough to need quavers and semi-quavers, we'll probably will have switched to tablature at that point just because it's um, more convenient. And a lot of the time, if we're working off video anyway, we might not even need to notate things at all. Somewhere along the way, someone came up with a way of notating music that was specific for guitar, which is what we call tablature or tab. Instead of the five lines that we have for traditional notation, we have six lines. Why do we have six lines? Because there's six strings on the guitar and each line just indicates one string. Then we just put a little number there. The number just tells us what fret we should be playing on that string. So that's the great advantage of tablature is that we can sort of, well, basically if I demonstrate this, the high E string, okay? We're familiar with that way. We can also have a look at what it looks like written on the page. Now, there's, but there's actually five different places that I can play that same note not in a different octave or anything, the exact same pitch I can play it in all these different places, which means when we get to learning some songs, there might be several different ways we could we could be playing it. And if we wanted to make sure that we're playing a particular song exactly as it was written as the original guitarist was playing it, then tablature helps us a lot for that. What I find tablature isn't as good for is whereabouts in time should the notes occur or easily summarise as the rhythm that goes along with it. Now there's there's definitely ways that they do work around this using some of the ideas that came along for traditional notation. What I mean is should I be playing a note like this? Two, three, four, or should I be playing one? Dun, 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 whatever, the rhythm with it that goes along with it makes it very difficult to sight read songs that you might not have known so tablature is always going to be the way to go for learning songs that you actually have access to the original recording so you know what the rhythm should be sounding like uh, if that all seems a little bit confusing don't worry it'll make more sense when we as we go into our the um, dedicated lessons on those things all right So for now we're going to do a couple of little exercises which also happen to be songs that'll get us understanding tablature and getting our fingers moving, getting us making music. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to start with the old sort of bass line from Greece. The song was called Summer Love. Okay, that's right. It was an old movie, everyone's seen it. If you haven't seen the film, then I'm sure you'll be able to find access to this particular song, but it's everywhere. It's really just a good, simple song to get us making music. So I'm going to put the tablature on the screen now. Of course, it's going to be in the PDF that accompanies this as well. And all I'm playing here is just playing the open E string. I'm muting that, I'm cutting it off, and I can do that with my left hand and stop it like that, or I can stop it with my right hand. Either way is fine for now. I'm just going to play that, and I'm going to move between the E string to the A string. That's it. Now I need to move to the second fret of the A string. 
Back to the open A string. Back on the second fret. Off again, and then it will start again. So I'll just play that all together. Now we're going to have a go of the theme music from the old show, Peter Gunn. If you are familiar with this song, it's you'll know it's a, it's a pretty quick tempo. This song still pops up at sporting events sometimes and in various places, but we're going to sort of make sure it's a, it's a good uh, exercise that gets our coordination going in all four of our fretting fingers. Just before we even have a go of this, just getting, getting used to the idea of, of triggering the uh, movement of just one finger at a time, Okay, so I'm, all I'm doing obviously is, is just bringing the finger forward, which is, a little, which is a little bit different to what we do when we actually fret a note. But the actual motion of the hand for this riff is just bringing forward the first finger, then the second finger, then the little finger, then the third finger. Okay, so if you can practice doing that, that's essentially what we're going to be doing when we play this riff. Okay, so if we're in second position, we've assigned a finger to a fret here. We're going to get used to bringing our fingers down in that pattern bringing the first finger, then second finger, then little finger, then third finger. And because this is a lot of playing all on the one string here, this is a good one to have a go at using a pick. Now you don't have to, of course, it's not going to ruin the sound or anything if we do it brushing the corner of the thumb. So practice it doing both ways, but this is a good one to yeah, bring in the use of the pick, have a go. It's going to feel awkward at first, but, but an exercise like this, just doing it all down strokes, so we're going to slow it down quite a lot from the original and this time I am going to use a metronome. So even though you don't have to use a metronome at home, I do encourage it. It's going to be a good way to really test how good your rhythm is and also of gauging, you know, by, by gradually increasing tempo of any song or exercise you have to play. It's a, another good way of, of you know, building up that coordination of the fingers. So I'm just using a free uh, metronome app that I found in the App Store and that's at 64 beats per minute. So when we're ready for a challenge, we're going to move that same pattern of notes onto the A string. So if we are using a pick for this, we're going to need to be a lot more precise because, of course, we can accidentally hit the strings on either side of the string we're aiming for. Now, for a riff like this, we could easily play it all with one finger, you know. But we're making this an exercise to really just build up the coordination of all four fingers, in particular that little finger that's always going to be the weakest. Okay, so here we go at a faster tempo. What are we at? 86 beats per minute now. original is playing quite a bit faster than that, it's actually playing eighth notes, so it's closer to about this speed. Mm -hmm. 